Morsley Summercraft here. Today I am making something for my son for Christmas. Now my last project was for my other son. Uh, I made a cane from Jurassic Park if you watched that. Um, I haven't actually released it yet as I'm recording this today because um, I'm going to release it after Christmas after he's received his gift. So today I'm going to be making a gift for my other son Connor and uh, I couldn't think what to make him. Now Cole, my youngest, is a fan of Jurassic Park, so it made perfect sense to make that cane. Now, Connor is a big fan of Doctor Who, so I thought, what better gift to make than a Dalek? So, I was actually speaking to a good friend of mine, um, Jeff Hornan, in the US, and he said that a friend of his, a little bit south of St. Louis, um, had made one, and he ended up speaking to him and getting the plans from Barry. I don't know Barry, but thank you, Barry. I printed off the plans from Barry, and uh, this is what I'm going to be making today, a Dalek from Doctor Who. So I have a piece of wood that just happened to be sized about right. Um, we're looking at about four inches by eight inches approximately when finished so you need a little bit of extra for for uh, you know for waste waste block and everything but um, that's what we're going to be making now the piece of wood is Osage orange I would have preferred a piece of maple but I don't have a piece that big that's dry and ready to turn so Osage is going to be okay and then I'm going to have a walnut to uh, for all the little details the first thing I'm going to do is put a tenon so I can get it into my chuck and then we'll start laying it out and turning it down to the Dalek. It's actually also a box, so it's not just ornamental, you can put things in it as well. So, without further ado, let's get this started. Okay, so here I have a piece of Osage. It is approximately five inches by nine and a half, ten inches long. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put a tenon on this end. It's gonna be um, about a half an inch of a deep tenon because it's quite a long piece of wood and um, it's going to be about three and five eighths in diameter. So I've set my calipers for that and uh, I will get that turned down with a diamond tip parting tool. Now the other thing I wanted to mention is I just bought myself the Trend Air Shield Pro. I've used it a couple of times and I absolutely love it, uh, especially for sanding. When you're sanding um, you want to try and avoid all of that dust. Now I have my dust collection system going but there's still some dust, some resid residual dust in the air and the Trend Air Shield Pro which I have right here I purchased this on Amazon they had it with free shipping over the last little while and I received it in good time so I'll be wearing this today for protection of my lungs Okay, so this is now in the jaws of my chuck, uh, a good three and five eighths inch tenon, so it's really held fast. It's between centers for the time being. So now what I've got to do is take my drawing and get an idea of the layout of this uh, Dalek onto my piece of wood. This will be the tenon side coming down to the tip. Now this tip is actually a lid, so I will have to part that off. So. That's what I'm going to work on initially is this top portion and the lid and part it off with a tenon. So I'm going to give myself two and three quarters there because that gives me enough for the bottom. It still gives me enough for the bottom and, and to part it off. I have an extra three quarter of an inches down the bottom to part it off. But I can bring this whole section down now. Can bring that whole section down to two inches in diameter.
Okay, so I have marked this for the rounded portion, which is an inch. It's going to be two inches. I still have to take it down a little bit to get to that two inches, but it's going to be an inch tall from the end of it, which on the drawing is essentially from here. From here up to here is the one inch by the two inches and then the bottom portion is the rest of it one inch so what I'm gonna do is first of all I'm gonna bring this section here down to my two inches and then round this off so I've made up this really simple template which is a two inch circle and the dot being the center of the circle I can hold that against this line right here and then essentially that's the shape I'm looking for so I can hold it over the wood and try to attain as close to a circle as as I can Okay, so this is now sanded to 320 um, so that is as much sanding as I will do on that piece what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my ridges okay so that will be the first this is the entire top so I need to make a centered hole about here facing straight forward and then the two pieces up here which would be kind of like ears I don't know really what they were they were just um, these portions and then the front phaser or whatever it was called was sticking out the front so I'll be using a quarter inch force and a bit sitting on the bedways on a board so that it's sitting dead on center and then I will use my indexing system to get it to the locations that I want and for the ears, I will put the drill at a certain angle that I'm looking for and use that angle for both of them so they're the same. And I will have opposite sides of the indexing system so that they match pretty much dead on or as close as, they, as, they, as I can get them. I've never actually used the indexing system on this uh, Laguna Revo yet. Um, I was just playing with it now and uh, it seems pretty decent so uh, we'll see how we get on with that so what I'm going to do now is turn these little ridges in this piece finish sanding that piece down and then I'll drill the holes for the phaser and the two ears So I've got the head basically turned now and sanded to 320 grit. So this portion right here with the tenon, which I will then part off. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to seal it before I drill it, I think. Uh, so I'm going to seal it with a cellulose-based sanding sealer. I recently purchased some of the Mylan's uh, cellulose sanding sealer. So I'm going to be using that today. It is a lacquer based sanding sealer as opposed to a shellac based, which is what I always use. So now I'm going to try this. It's supposed to be a better product and give you a, a better finish. So that's what I'm hoping for. Although this is really just a, an ornamental piece. It's uh, just for fun, really. But uh, we'll see. I'm going to open this up and we'll seal it. And then we're going to do the drilling for the... I don't know if you want to call them ears and a phaser gun or whatever those are, but uh, that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so now comes the fun part of drilling the uh, holes. So this is literally my setup here. If you can see this, I've just laid this board across the front or across the bedways which gets my drill essentially on center so what I want to do is I want to try and get this so that it's coming straight in but I have to lock the bit I have to lock the spindle first but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in straight about there 
and I'm going to decide which piece I want to be the front of this. Not that it has a face as such, but it just might look better if I center it on the green. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drill this in the depth of the front of the Forstner bit. And I'll do the same with the ears. And uh, we'll see how that goes. So let's get this locked in and ready and we'll get that drilled. Okay, so the holes are drilled. Uh, they're not bad. Um, my method of drilling probably wasn't the best. I should probably have a jig so the drill is perfectly in position, but it's close enough, I think. Now, going down the body length might be a different story altogether because I really do need them to be perfect all the way down the body length. So we'll see about that. Um, but for now, we'll get this finished and parted off. Now, I don't want to put wax on this because um, I don't want to get wax in these holes, that's for certain. So I think I'm just going to actually leave it like that. What I might do at the end when I'm completely finished is spray lacquer the whole piece. So that is the top portion of our Dalek done. You can see where the phaser is going to come out and the two ear nubs, whatever they are. And then uh, that's going to go into the lip of the box of the base. And then I just need to take that little nib off and then uh, sand it a little bit. And we'll be ready to spray the whole piece with uh, lacquer once it's all assembled. But uh, I'm quite happy with that. It's turned out okay. First time using the uh, indexing system and it seemed to work pretty good but it would be definitely handy to have a jig so that the drill is aimed in the exact position you want it um, even if you had something that would that could rotate and lock down into different positions or different angles you don't really need the angle because the the lathe can do that part but there we go that's that part on to the next which would be the body so the first thing we're going to do is uh, chew up the end of this and then drill out the center for the box using a force and a bit. So on a slow speed, I'm gonna start drilling this blank, making sure you hold on to this when you retract. Hold on to the Jacob's chuck when you retract the drill bit. And clear the shavings off them so they don't get bound up. perfect it's enough because I want this to swivel I don't want a click fit but I don't want it to wobble around too much so that right there is perfect so here I'm just shaping the body working on the top portion Just seeing how it looks when you put the head on. Just removing some of the waste wood, bringing it down to the shape that I'm looking for. A little bit of a bead there.
I've used the passing tool to define the bottom of the garlic and now I've just got to remove the excess wood from the bottom to the uh, beads that I've created. Trying to find the shape that I'm looking for, so it looks right to me anyway. A little bit of a bead at the base as well. basic body turned uh, I just need to get it sanded down to 320 grit and finished like this one with uh, the cellulose sanding sealer and then uh, it'll be on to the drilling process with that um, but it's starting to look like a Dalek I'll come back to you when I'm ready to drill the holes for the 48 of those little knobs on the side whatever you want to call them big rivets I don't know what you call them 48 48 of these little uh, knobby things around the body and then uh, there's uh, I think there's a couple here I have to look at the other picture but there's a couple of little guns that it has at the front one looks like a toilet plunger if you ask me but I've got to make those as well still so I'll come back to you when I'm set with the drill After a little bit of debate and thinking about it, I decided actually that I'm going to use a piece of quarter inch dowel rod for all of those little holes. So I have to now turn one, two, three, four, five small pieces for here and all the buttons, which I'm not turning, I'm just going to sand them round and then uh, cut them to the right length. It's coming along though. So I am now actually going to part this off. Got a bit wobbly there. So I'm going to just cut off the last little bit. It'll probably snap at this point. Um, so I'm going to just use my uh, saw here. Gently nibble that away. And there it is. Well, after having parted it off, I realized that I forgot to do those little details that I was going to put in here. So I am, in fact, going to still do that. So I've gently put it back in the chuck. I haven't over tightened it, but I've jammed it in here with the tailstock. That is the detail done. I'm just going to use a scouring pad just to kind of smooth them down. I'm not even going to bother sanding it. I think that that is going to make all the little, all the difference, all the little detail that makes a difference in a piece. So I'm using intrinsic black to color each one of these little tiny buttons and then uh, these are water based so I'll still be able to use the um, lacquer over top of these no problem. 
So that was a very tedious task of making 48 of these little tiny buttons or plugs that go into all of the holes that are around here. There is 12 rows of four, um, so that's 48 little buttons. And then also I still gotta make the guns, the three guns, and I've made the ear pieces. So I have to make this front gun as well, the phaser or whatever, whatever it's called. But uh, just to give you an idea of how it's coming along, I'm quite happy with it. So uh, I am now gonna push all of these in. I'm not even going to glue them, I think that they're going to just friction fit quite well and then I'm going to lacquer spray this whole piece so I think the lacquer will just help hold them in. Um, I can't see them ever really falling out so I'm not going to worry about it. So uh, okay, so let's get these pushed in and then I'll get right back to you and we'll get these other pieces turned and also I've got some little pieces to to put around here as well they'll be glued on so it's at times like this you're glad that you maybe you didn't wax it because if you had the glue might not might not set well you'd have to sand it back again So these are the two phase guns made for the body, one slightly longer than the other, just like the actual, the real thing. I've dyed them with the Hampshire Sheen Intrinsic Black, and I only got a little bit on my fingers. So I'm gonna let them dry for a couple of minutes, and then I'm gonna two-part epoxy them into the body of the Dalek. And now for final assembly of the Dalek, all I'm gonna do is two-part epoxy glue in the three the three guns the rest of it I think is in there pretty good it's not going to come out I'm going to just spray it and uh, I think that will be good um, but these ones are a little bit loose so I'm going to glue those in because they're a bit longer too okay so that's in there and now for these so the short one goes in this side this one might be a little bit tight let's see there is our Dalek prior to the final finish and thanks for watching this is the finished Dalek with the added pieces that I put around there which is quite simply quarter inch by quarter inch by three quarters of an inch pieces that I just glued on uh, that was just maple that I dyed with the intrinsic black and then I simply glued them into place around around here just above that collar so they kind of sit there quite nicely and uh, that is it finished guys so that comes off and it swivels like a real Dalek so it's pretty cool my son was pretty happy with it I did in fact put uh, several coats of lacquer on it to give it some protection um, and I probably I should still put something underneath of it for him uh, Merry Christmas 2020 or something from dad um, I have since been asked to make a pepper grinder like this that could be quite cool um, I suppose a, a salt and pepper grinder you could make out of something very similar if you're into Doctor Who so uh, anyway thanks for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe and I'll see you again for the next wood turning project. Have a great new year. I hope you had a good Christmas and I hope 2021 brings a cure to COVID and uh, a better year for everybody. So uh, keep turning safe, take care, bye for now.